Hi, my name's Cy Horton and I'm a sales engineer for Farrow UK. Welcome to part one of the Scene 7.1 New Features tutorial. As an overview, we've made various enhancements to the software. The first section will cover registration for detection of new markers for laser scans, improve registration parameters for cloud to cloud, be it focus, freestyle or focus to freestyle. We've improved on-site registration and also the registration target weights. From a visualization perspective, we can now create closed surfaces for freestyle scans and we've made some improvements to the quick view, not to mention a new customer improvement program and a few other small improvements. Firstly, we'll look at the registration side of things. So we now have a new automatic marker detection for laser scans. You'll notice here that the markers are the same as those that used to be used for the freestyle, but we've added in a section now so we can either use checkerboards, planes, spheres, all these new markers. The markers can be used across focus and freestyle scans when registering the two datasets together. Within the install folder of Faro's Scene 7.1, we also provide you with a PDF of over 200 markers. In the settings, you simply check the Find Markers box when going into the registration. But it all depends on the distance from the scanner when scanning. So the marker size by default is 15.5 centimeters. And here you can see based on the scan resolutions, the distances you can expect to get from the scanner. As you start to reduce those marker sizes, then those distances reduce exponentially. When you're processing the data, you can get seen to automatically pick up those markers as you would normally with a checkerboard or a sphere, as you can see in the image on the screen. From a registration perspective, when you go to your registration report, they're clearly identified which targets have been used, whether they're planes, markers, spheres or checkerboards. We've also improved the cloud to cloud registration for freestyle, when linking a freestyle scan to a focus scan. And here you can see the results and how this data is split across in the registration report. We've also improved on-site registration. So now automatically at auto cluster level, a scan manager is created. And you get the correct registration status for on-site registration. But a user should always perform a cloud to cloud or target based registration to optimize those registration results. This step was actually missing in scene seven, so we've now improved it. From a registration target weight perspective, we've changed the weighting of different target types for target based registration. So this will help to reflect on varying accuracies based on the targets you're using. This also changes the target tensions after registration, which ultimately results in more accurate results. We've given you the ability when subsampling for top view and cloud to cloud that you can now go down to a one millimeter setting to help register scenes with smaller dimensional accuracy. Moving over to the visualization side of things, we've given you the ability to create full color of a project point cloud from a laser scan and a freestyle data now, but a little note there, the freestyle data requires the interpolation option to be turned on in the scene capture software. But what you can see here, when scanning with a focus, it's all line of sight. But when it's combined with a freestyle scan, you're starting to pick up more of the information. Also, from a quick view perspective, we've implemented a new modern OpenGL rendering framework. So with shader-based coordinate artifact visualization, you can see on the left the quality of the data in the old versions of scene and how that is much crisper on the right hand side with the new coordinate system. We've also created a customer experience improvement program. The user themselves can decide whether to participate in the program or not. If you decide to participate, then each session we try to log the used commands and the exceptions. This will help us understand how people are actually using Faro Scene. It will also help us to find bugs faster because we'll be tracking the use of the system. There are other smaller improvements that we've made to the software. So for instance, you can now access the Faro knowledge base directly within Faro Scene, 
The knowledge base is a great source of information for anything to do with the Faro Focus, the Faro Freestyle or Faro Scene. You now have access to check for updates as and when you want to using the new user interface. This information is also available in the settings menu as well, so at any point you can check for the latest update. We've also made another couple of enhancements in that now on the right click context menu in the quick view and the 3D view you now have the dismiss selection option. Prior to that it was a keyboard shortcut of Control D. Also for imported images such as virtual scans you now have the registration options to place in 3D and place on a surface and again those are in the new context menu of the new user interface. There are a couple of minor bug fixes that we've made along the way where TIFF files that were exported by Faro Scene might appear completely black or broken when imported back into Scene. This has now been fixed. Also we discovered an issue when exporting scans to Autodesk Recap as the data was inaccurate. This has also now been resolved. In order to show the new feature of marker detection for focus and freestyle scans what I'm going to do is a quick freestyle scan and then a couple of focus scans and then we're going to use the new marker detection to do a target based registration. So firstly with inside scene capture 7.1 if I go to the options menu and go to the default scan options I'm using a freestyle objects for this particular example but in this scenario that I'm scanning a freestyle X will be a lot better because it's got a wider field of view. So firstly I need to turn on my marker detection option. So this will look for the markers as we're scanning. You'll notice here we've also now got a plane detection option. So this will look for flat planes. Also, if you want to create a project point cloud of freestyles now, another new feature that we've enabled in the system, you have to turn on interpolation. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to leave it off for now. So if we now go over to the capture tab, in here I've got my follow on camera on, I'm automatic flash, I set my saving location, and I've got the project base name that I'm going to use. So now what we'll do is we'll start doing some scanning. So if I now press the button on the freestyle, we'll start doing some scanning. The scenario is very simple. We're trying to get into a loft space. So I'm using the freestyle as the linking scan from the first floor into the loft space. So I've done a scan at the base with the focus, a scan in the loft space with the focus, and I'm using the freestyle and the new markers in order to get into the loft space itself. So here you can clearly see we've picked up the markers and then I move around the loft space and move into the hatch. So for the purposes of this video, I'm actually going to speed up the scanning with the freestyle to get it done a lot faster rather than having to sit and watch me scan into a loft space. Now the scanning is complete, you can see here in scene capture we've got a single scan and we've got the process icon which is in orange, which means the data is unprocessed. If we go to the options button and go to process first off, the thing that we need to make sure is on is the extensive marker detection. Now when scanning, the system is very good at picking up markers as and when we scan as I've previously shown. But what is also good practice if you are using markers is to turn this option on because what it will do is it will look for additional markers in the scan that may not have been picked up during the scanning process. So with those options on, if we close that down and we click on the process option then the system will then open the video information and will start processing that documentation. Now this can take anything from a couple of minutes to quite a while depending on how many scans you've physically done. So I'm just going to let this process and jump over to a scan project that has already been done. So that processing phase is now complete and we can see we've got a green light next to our scan and a green light on our process option. So if we expand this you can see in here these are the markers that have either been picked up during the scanning process or using the extensive marker option during the processing phase. So if I double click on that scan, we can go in here and look how we've scanned that particular scenario. So if I set my center of rotation here, you can see that we've got the loft ladders coming up through the loft hatch into the loft space itself. So we're starting to pick up the underside of the slate, the purlins and the rafters and the markers, which you can clearly see marked in here. So now we've got our freestyle scan, what we'll do is we'll jump over to Faro Scene. So we're now in Faro Scene, all I've done is I've created a new project and I've dragged and dropped or imported the project 
into my system to give me the two scans that we've already done. First thing we need to do is process those. So if I go to the process option, click on the master cluster, click on configure processing. I didn't do any color, so I'm going to turn this option off because I just wanted the freestyle scan to stand out when we do the registration. If we scroll down now, you'll notice that we've now got the find markers option. So during the processing phase, I'm going to get the system to find the markers for me. So then all I do is click start processing and let it do its thing. So that project is now processed. And here you can see in the project tab, we've got two process scans. If we go to the explore tab, then you can see we've got our two scans in here that we can start to have a look around and see where they are. Now you can see they're roughly aligned down to the sensors in the system. But also if we go to each of the scans, you can see we've got our marker container where it's picked up all the markers that we placed in and around the access hatch. So if I close those down now, now what I need to do is get the freestyle scan into the focus scan in order to do the registration. So if I click on the import tab and import projects and I navigate to my freestyle scan, I find the LS proj file and I click open and that will now bring in my freestyle scan into my focus scans. So if we go to the explore tab and have a look around in here, then what we'll see is we've got our freestyle scan in and around this area, but it's not in the right location. So we can see the color area there. So now the next phase is to check first off that we've got our markers, which we've already checked on the focus scans and check that the markers have come across on the freestyle scans. So if we go to our registration tab, and this time we're going to perform an automatic registration and start that automatic registration. And this time, rather than using top view and cloud to cloud, we're actually going to go for a target based registration. I'm going to leave all the settings as they are and click the register and verify option. So you can see the system has clearly registered it. And on the screen here, we can see correspondence view where we've got the position of the freestyle scan in relationship to the focus scan. If we go to the report now, you can see we've got a mean distance error of 2.1. And as you well know, my limit here is four millimeters. As we scroll down, we can start to see that we've used physical markers in here because they're determined in the report. So we can start to see the values of which markers have registered to which markers within the system. And if we say yes to that and click finish, we can then go to the explore tab and have a look around to make sure that that position is perfect within the relationship of going through and up the loft hatch and into the area that we scanned. So if we come up through the loft hatch here, and then we can start to see that the markers have aligned and the purlins and the rafters have aligned here because we can see the color overlay from the freestyle and the gray overlay from the focus. Also, while we're in here, we can show one of the other minor enhancements to the system where if we select a polygon area and we need to get rid of that, before it was going to a clear command or control D on the keyboard as a keyboard shortcut. But if we now right click on the screen, go to selection, that control D has been put in the context sensitive menu to allow us to dismiss that selection point. So another couple of small points, because we've got a project here with focus and freestyle data, if I go to project point cloud and click create, then in here we can now create a closed surface project point cloud of focus and freestyle data. But in order to do that, we must have done the freestyle data with interpolation turned on. If I cancel that for now, up in the top right hand corner, we also have direct access to the knowledge base. And if you've never used the knowledge base, it's a great source of everything to do with Faro Scene, the Focus or the Freestyle or any other product for that matter. But in here, you can find links to lots of the tutorials that we've done over time and lots of hints and tips and tricks and also new software releases as and when you need them. So to summarize, we've made enhancements to the registration side of Faro Scene, where we've given you a new marker option to give you combined markers between focus and freestyle scans. We've improved the registration parameters for Faro Freestyle and focus registration when using cloud to cloud. We've improved on-site registration and also the registration target weights. From a visualization perspective, you can now create closed surface for freestyle scans. And we've also improved the quick view. Not to mention, you can now sign up to the customer improvement program, and we've also given you access to the knowledge base and also additional tools for deselecting selected areas. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use, and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming tutorials.